so glad to see you here this morning in our home. We just pray that God blesses you today. I don't know about you, but uh, <clears throat> I keep praying for uh, barbers to come back uh, back to work. <laughs> I've had some ladies actually be on Zoom and show me their roots. Man, them some white roots. The good thing is, is that we're all believers in Jesus Christ who come to him and accept him as our Lord and Savior. And today, <clears throat> it's Sunday fun day, and we get an opportunity to worship him. Amen? Well, let's pray as we get started today. <clears throat> Father, we just come before you, and we give you all thanks, all praise, all glory, all honor. Father, we will worship you in our homes, in our churches, and on the street. We will worship you in Walmart and Target, God. We will worship you on the every place we go, Father. We just pray that we would be the spirit of the living God that gets spread <clears throat> around the earth. Father, we just invite you to come here today as we've got all these folks with us and around us and out on the Internet. We ask, Lord, that you would bless every home, bless every person that's with us today in Jesus' name. Let your spirit just move, Father, in every place that everyone would have an encounter with you today. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We praise you and put this time before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We can see that God, you're moving a mighty river through the nations. When young and old return.
this morning when I got up. I said, Lord, what is on your heart this morning? What do you want us to say? What do you want to say to your children today? said, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. He said, I am your strength, and I'm the one who brings you joy. So he said, tell the people about having joy in me today. So these songs are a little older, but they really depict joy. Joy. 
find strength in you, Lord. I find strength in you, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me strength. Holy Spirit, give me joy. Holy Spirit, give me joy, joy, joy. Holy Spirit, give me joy. Father, we just give you all praise today. Father, we don't care about our circumstances or what we're involved in. We don't care what's going on around us. Father, we will keep our eyes focused on you. We are blessed and we're thankful for you, O oh God. We're thankful, Lord, that in these days that we can really call upon you as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We're thankful, God, that we don't have to look to our government for safety, comfort. But, Father, we look to you, the God of the heavens and the earth. You're the God of all the nations. And we look to you because you're where our hope comes from. You're where our foundation is solid. And so, Lord, today, we will declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we give you all praise, all glory, all honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, Ignite family. Excited to have you guys here for another beautiful Sunday. Just going to give you some quick announcements. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're moving moving on the social media process make sure you comment that you like that you that you share the post to spread the good news to your friends your family and everybody that you know also you're free to message us if you want to hang out or get to know us or you have questions about the service or God really speaks to you or moves to you make sure to get a hold of us we're always listening we're really fast to respond we'd love to hear from you on Wednesday nights at 7 30 p.m. our pastor is sharing the gospel he's hosting his own live stream and he's speaking truth Make sure you and your family, during the middle of the week, you just plug in, you listen, and you hear what God's going to say to you. We have giving options below, so if you feel led to give, make sure you do so. Finally, guys, I just want to speak hope and I want to speak truth to you. Proverbs 16.9 says, For in their hearts humans choose their path, but God chooses their steps. Right now, no matter what you're facing in this whole world of crisis and crazy and, and predicaments that are unpredictable, I just want you to know that God is God. He doesn't change no matter what we face, no matter what the world does, he stays the same. Enjoy the service, and I pray that God speaks to you in awesome ways. Well, good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you're here, and we've been uh, able to see folks joining us over the last several weeks from India and Africa, California, North Carolina, Ohio, and right here in Texas. And uh, if you're from a different state or a different country, I want to encourage you to just kind of throw out a hello out there on, our, uh, on, uh, uh, on the comment section. <clears throat> and just let us know that you're watching and where you're watching from. We'd love to bless you, and, and we're just glad that you're here with us. And I want to greet everyone in our sister church in Thousand Oaks. Man, we miss you guys so much, and we're so blessed by you. You're such an amazing group of people. We just want you to know we love you. And we're praying for you from here at the Sister Church in Denton, Texas. <clears throat> to all the folks who are part of Ignite Church Denton, I know it's been, <clears throat> what are we on now, like six weeks that we've not been able to meet in our church building. And uh, boy, we really miss you guys a lot. So if you're out there listening, I'm sure you are. We just want you to know that we love you and we miss you so much. And we're really looking forward to it. It looks like our state is easing up some of the restrictions and so we're hoping to be able to get together with you guys and meet with you again face to face and uh, get in some hugs and, and just some time of fellowship. <clears throat> so be watching our social media because as those things begin to happen, as we start to see things change, we'll be uh, announcing on our uh, social media on Instagram, Facebook and those kind of things <clears throat> when we're going to be meeting again. So just keep your eye on that. And so we're really excited about that. I'm sure you are, too. There's a lot of people that are <laughs> I've talked to that are starting to get a little uh, stir crazy, but uh, God is good. The weather's been nice in most places, and uh, especially here in Texas, it's starting to ramp up into, into summertime, but <clears throat> we're still enjoying some really good, good weather here and uh, able to plant some things and 
see, go from the winter season, because now we have four seasons here, we're not used to that, but we just came out of winter where we had no leaves on our trees for a long time, but now we're starting to see life begin to bud all, ar all around our property. <clears throat> um, as I was sharing with you during the worship time, uh, as I got up this morning, the Lord was really impressing upon me um, joy. And I, I think the reason is, is because everywhere I've been connecting with people, um, I'm finding, and it's not everyone, I'm not saying it's everyone, but I'm finding so often how many people are struggling, um, struggling with um, just the challenges they're facing. I mean, some people are working from home and it's creating some challenges. <clears throat> they're trying to find childcare. They're trying to deal with uh, uh, training their children and having homeschooling at home while they're trying to do their job and work from home. And all. I mean, people are dealing with financial challenges and when do I get to go back to work? And <clears throat> it, are they gonna um, get me my unemployment check? And you know, how are we gonna make what, we're, what we've got stretch? And there's so many challenges. And, and it's almost like even through this whole thing, people have uh, come to a place, and I'm not saying everybody, so don't, if you, don't get offended if, if you don't fit this category, but so often everywhere I've gone, people just don't want to be happy. They, they, they don't want to be joyous. It's almost like it's, it's a sin or it's against the law if you're happy and joyful and going through this whole thing without this somberness. Yes, people are dying, and it's sad. And I mourn with those who are mourning because of their loss, but I'm going to rejoice for this day. I'm going to rejoice because those who are still here, we can rejoice. We can rejoice with those who have gone to heaven and uh, they're with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I don't think they want to come back once they've, <laughs> they've spent some time with the Lord and <clears throat> been with him. And so I rejoice with those who, who have gone on to be with the Lord. And, uh, but Lord, he, Lord, goodness gracious, for here we just need to like, I think just connect with a little bit of joy. A smile is okay. Can I just tell you, smiling at somebody is okay. And even if they give you a dirty look, now, there are some people, you can't even tell if they're giving you a dirty look because they got their masks on. <clears throat> but in my eyes, in our eyes, we can still show, right, the, the eyes are the windows of the soul. And you can tell what's going on in somebody by just looking at their eyes. You can tell when they're, they're feeling dread, they're feeling tired, they're feeling exhausted or when they just have the pure joy of the Holy Spirit just resonating out of them. And so even if you've got a mask on and you can't smile, show a smile to somebody through your mask, <clears throat> show them through your eyes that the joy of the Lord's in you and just greet somebody, say hello to them. My goodness, I'm telling you, people are struggling with even saying hello to somebody. And it's like, okay, we've got a difficult situation going on, but it doesn't mean we have to walk around and that, that we have to walk around constantly somber about it i mean we got to rejoice in the fact that our god's doing great things even in the midst of this challenge that there are people who are coming closer to god as a result of the challenges that they're facing which is unfortunate i wish that people would come to jesus when they're in their good times when they're they're fat and happy and the paychecks are rolling in and they're meeting all their needs and they get to go on vacations and i wish people would come to jesus during those times and i guess some do but there's a real move of God that begins to happen when people begin to get squeezed because that's when you find out where's people, where people's hopes are. That's where you find out where they're really at is when they start to get squeezed. But that's <clears throat> also a time when people start turning to God because they're like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make things happen? I know that there's people out there right now trying to figure out how you're going to make your, your rent payment or your mortgage payment. I know there's folks out there today who are wondering, how are we going to be able to go out and get groceries? How are we going to be able to keep the electricity bill paid? Because in the midst of all these things going on, there are still people that are, that are wanting to get paid and that they won't keep those things on if you don't pay them. And so I know that there's this challenge going on and there, <clears throat> maybe you're doing great. Maybe your company told you, go home, have a vacation, do some stuff around the yard, work on some projects. We're going to pay you the whole time and not expect anything. Man, praise Jesus. Enjoy that long vacation. <clears throat> let's mourn with those who mourn. Let's, let's pray for those who are challenged. But we rejoice with you who are able to have those moments. But I'm praying that everyone from every perspective during this situation turns their eyes towards Jesus. Can I just say that? I mean, come on. We, we live in a world that's so diverse right now, especially here in America. <clears throat> we have 
like a polarization that has occurred where it's like 50% believes one way and 50% believes another way. And man, I just think we need to come together and we just need to find Jesus in all of this because whether you believe in him or not, I can tell you that. I can tell most people who don't have a relationship with Jesus because they are not joyful. There is not that spirit of peace inside of them. Um, they might have an apathy, but they definitely don't have a spirit of joy within them. <clears throat> if you'll open up with me to John, 2 John chapter 1, if you have your Bibles, that'd be great. Otherwise, we'll be posting it up here on the TV to my left. But open up 2 John chapter 1 through 1 through 3, uh, 1 through 13. Now, what I want to encourage you in today, because this is what the Lord kind of gave me this morning, <clears throat> is to walk in joy. Walking in joy. What does it mean and how do we do it? You know, I, I know that a lot of people will say, you know, in the midst of our trials and tribulations, Scripture says to, we're to walk in joy in the midst of those things. And people will roll their eyes, look at me and say, oh, pastor, how is that even possible? Well, the first thing off is you've got to have the right things in place. Nobody... Uh, makes a recipe at home for dinner without getting everything out that they need and making sure they have everything they need and all the basics are there. And so when it comes to walking in joy, you have to have certain things in place so that when the, when the, when the wind starts blowing, when the waves start crashing in on you, when the sand starts shifting on you, that you know where you stand with the Father. You know where you stand, that you're on solid footing, good ground, right? I think that's one of the challenges that we have. Without Jesus, we are not on firm ground. Without Jesus, we don't have a solid foundation of truth to stand upon and rest upon and say, he's got me and he's got this. So there are certain things that have to, I think, that are important in, in walking in joy. It's not just, a, I'm just going to be happy and pretend that everything doesn't exist and all these things aren't happening. That's not the case. I'm not saying you know, that these things aren't happening. Of course they're happening. That would be ridiculous to sit there and say, well, just pretend they're not there. Pretend the, the person knocking on your door isn't there for a bit. Don't, you know, I'm not telling you to pretend those things. What I'm saying is in the midst of them, look to the Father. Look, if you can't even look to the Father and you can't look to Him with confidence that He's going to take care of you like the Word of God says, then choose Him. Come, let him come into your life. Be the son or daughter to the father so that he'll, you know, he's willing to take care of you. But can I just encourage you, don't just come to him like a sugar daddy. Don't just come to him reaching into his pocket, looking for quarters, looking for a dollar. Have a relationship with him. I know it drives parents crazy when all their kids want is, is something from them. What you got? What you got? What you get me? You know, you go to the grocery store, you come home. Did you get me anything? Get me anything. You know, they go out, you go out and you go shopping. And they're like, I want a toy. I want to write. I mean, I think, I think, man, I, I don't see them very much anymore. But I remember when I was growing up in the, in the, in uh, some of the supermarkets, they would actually have a toy section. And I, I could tell my mom tried to avoid that toy section every single time because she had four kids tracking around with her. I think that's why sometimes she liked leaving us at home is because she didn't want to hear us clamoring about because, oh, look at this cool toy. But they actually had a section. I think that was set up on purpose because kids would drive their parents crazy until they bought them some kind of trinket. But um, we got we to gotta get to a place where we're just trusting God, where we're trusting God in the things that we have and, and, and who he is and, and have a relationship with him and not just be looking at what we can get for him, from him but a, and just blessings that he gives us. But the fact that he gives us, he's already made us inheritors of Christ Jesus for those who follow him and call him their sons and daughters, right? So we have some, so much to be thankful for and so much that we're blessed by. And the fact that he cares about our daily needs, he cares about the roof over our head, he cares about the clothes on our back, he cares about, uh, about the food that, that is in our cupboards. And praise God, I mean, if you look at Exodus, God took care of his people for 40 years in the desert. He gave them food. He gave them water. He was, their, he was their cloud by day. He was their fire by night. Man, God will take care of you. The question is, can we, in the midst of difficult times, can we turn our faces directly towards him and say, Father, I truly trust you, and I can tell you that your faith is going to be tested. Because I don't know if you realize this, but when pastors preach, there's a lot of times they have to be preaching to themselves. So, like I said last week, I'm preaching to myself. I've got to preach to myself because even though I'm sitting here in front of the camera and talking to you today, 
doesn't mean I don't have challenges in all this. It doesn't mean that everything's been simple and everything's just been going hunky-dory and there's plenty of money in the bank account. No, man, we're in the same boat that everybody else is in. We are facing challenges. And so every day, I mean, I, got, I get to choose. Am I going to let my flesh lie to me and get all scared and worried about what's coming? Or, you know, am I going to lose my house? Or are we going to lose people to church? Are we going to, I mean, come on, we can sit around and worry about all the woulda, coulda, shouldas. Or we can just kind of turn our faces towards the spirit of living God and walk in joy. So today, can I just tell you, as I'm sharing this word with you today, I believe that I'm preaching to myself because the Lord woke me up and said, my people need to hear this. Well, I'm, I'm a his people. I'm one of his people. I'm one of his kids. So as he's bringing the word today, I'm also receiving what he has because in the midst of this challenge and this trial that we're all facing, these things that are here right now. But can I just tell you, we're, it ain't stopping here. Can I tell you, you better get prepared right now in your spirit. You better get prepared because this stuff is not going to stop. It's not going to stop. We're going to start seeing more things. And they even keep telling us that on the news, right? That why are they telling us that? Because they want us to get our minds already set up that something else is coming. Well, I can tell you right now, biblically speaking and prophetically speaking, biblical prophecy, yeah, these things are coming. So church, get ready. Get your spirit in the right place. Get yourself focused on him so you can walk in joy. All right, 2 John chapter 1. I'm going to read it to you here. It says, To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Can I tell you, not your truth, not the truth you choose, not the place in the Bible that you cut out and said, I'm good with this and I'm not good with that, but the truth of the Father, the truth of the Word. There has to be a foundational, absolute truth, and I believe that truth comes from the Father and comes through His Word. In verse 3, it goes on to say, Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. So see, that's where we find grace, mercy, and peace. We find it in Him, and we find it through the truth of His Word. We f because... He's, he's going to protect his word, and his word is absolute. In verse 4, it goes on to say, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in the truth. So I can tell you, the Lord delights when we walk in that biblical truth that he's put before us. As we receive commandment from the Father, and now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. Come on, people. Can we just start loving one another? Whew. Verse 6, this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. Now, people don't like that. People don't like, don't tell me what to do. They, you already hear it. Don't tell me what to do. Can I tell you, when the Father gives you a word, when he gives you a commandment, when he sets you off on a path, when he says, son, daughter, here's where I want you to go. Here's what I want you to do. Don't dilly-daddle. Don't fiddly fart around. Get to getting on what God's told you to do and follow his commandment. It, do, it doesn't just mean his word. You've got to be hearing what he's saying to you and listen to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit says, mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm, that's not the best for you. Look, we can do a lot of things and all things may be permissible, but they're not all beneficial. So I think the Holy Spirit comes and he's not trying to be this lawful pfft, spoiling your fun, but he's trying to get you to live a life and trying to give us direction on how to have a life that's filled with joy, promise, peace, grace, and mercy. Let's see, where was I? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Verse six, this is love. That we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. In verse 7, for many deceivers have gone out in the, into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Man, can I tell you, there are people out there who are confessing and, and saying that Jesus, um, Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Jesus isn't God. He might be a prophet. Some people will be willing to go as far as saying Jesus was a prophet. Many religions will actually say that. But I can tell you from my life and the testimony of my life, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power in and through his name. Hallelujah. I mean, we know that because, because the sons of Sceva, right, they actually began to speak out in, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches and speaks of. And they're like, man, Jesus we know. 
Paul we know. Who are you? And completely decimated those guys. Man, I don't want to be on that side of the fence. But it goes on to say here, let's see. Um, I'm going to start back in 7 again. For many deceivers have gone out onto, into the world who did, do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. In verse 9, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. Now, people get all worked up if a Christian says, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not down. I'm not down with this, or I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to do that. Look, we're required. Man, we're, look, we're required. We're not to be deceived, and we can't just open ourselves up to all that stuff. Now, we can love on people. We can minister to them. We can be around them. Let's go on. It says, Do not deceive him in, uh, receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Look, bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. I can tell you, being a pastor, being a Christian for 30... I've been a pastor, wow, a long time. But I've been a Christian for 37 years, and I can tell you this. One of the biggest things that I see so often is that people will get around people with the intent, they say, well, I'm, I'm, I want to bring Jesus to them. I want to minister to them. But can I tell you, so many times Christians who, well-meaning Christians, wind up getting pulled away by the person who's not walking in the light, not walking in righteousness, because the person gets pulled over into the things of the flesh. They get pulled over into the things of the, carna of the carnal mind, rather than walking in the things of the Spirit, and they get pulled away. I don't want to see the body of Christ get pulled away. I don't want to see them fall into that stuff. And man, it's so often people think that they're just going to go do that. you got to realize when, when you go out and you start ministering to somebody, there's somebody who does not want you to mess with them. There is somebody... Uh, called Satan, right, who does not want you messing with what he's doing, and he'll get up in your grill. So you've got to be ready for him to get up in your grill to start causing, I mean, he'll start bringing stuff up to get your attention off on a million different things, but you've got to stay focused on the things of Christ and not, and not give in to those things that are in the world or the flesh. Verse 12, having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink. But I hope to come to you and speak face to face that your joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. See, even doing this online. Hey, this is great. I'm glad we're able to get the message out. I'm glad people are able to join us and partner with us. But man, nobody stays connected. Can I tell you after I share with people, hey, reach out to us. I'd love to chat with you, talk with you, minister to you, love on you, pray with you. Man, people just kind of watch this stuff and they kind of dwindle back into their their lives whatever they're doing but there's something about being with the body of christ look you can knock the church building all you want but even in scripture it says that they they began meeting the the church in the new in the in the new testament church they started meeting in the synagogues because that's what they were accustomed to was meeting in the synagogues and the jews kind of put up with it for a while letting them meet there and come into the synagogue services and stuff but there came a point when the, when, the, when the Christians had to start moving out into their old place. They started moving to their homes. Why? They didn't have buildings. But when they were Jews, they had buildings to go to. But then they, they got kicked out and they said, look, we ain't down with this. You guys got to move on. So they had to meet in their houses. But there is archaeological evidence that the apostles actually built physical churches. So look, can we not get hang up, hung up on the fact that it's a church building or not a church building? Because let's face it, when all of us meet together, we're meeting in some kind of building or some kind of location, and it doesn't matter if it's a park, but I can tell you, if it's raining out there, you don't want to be meeting out there. You're going to find a place with some walls and some shelter. So come on, let's stop splitting hairs and start getting about what God wants us to be getting about. And that's loving the body of Christ, loving one another, praising and worshiping Him, and fellowshipping, because that's one of the things this online thing is not accomplishing. Look, we can do Zoom meetings, and they're nice, and it's awesome to reconnect. I could reconnect with a lot of people who've had more time available to actually chat on Zoom or FaceTime or all these other uh, formats. And that's awesome, and it's nice, but there's something, just something about meeting face-to-face, -face, like what's spoken of here. There's something about meeting with one another about seeing each other and hugging one another and, 
and laughing with one another, crying with one another, talking with one another, sitting down and eating a meal with one another. Man, it says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves. Man, God wants us to gather together. And then right now we're being pushed aside, pushed apart. And God says, man, we, we the body of Christ, we're meant to be together. We are created for relationship. Why? Because he's all about relationship. So we want to press in to one another. And I can say, we miss you. One of the things about this scripture in 2 John that um, I want to make note of is that it's talking, about, it's talking about a lady, right? But I believe, and many others believe, that it's actually talking about a congregation. It's like we have a sister church in, in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. And we're sister churches. And so when I speak to them, I speak to them like a lady. I speak to them like, hey, the lady and your kids, you know. And so it's talking about the church body. And we want to be about the church body. Look, you, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm okay with you not being okay with me. I don't have to be right. Your truth is your truth. You can choose whatever you want. But I choose joy. I choose the body of Christ. I want to meet in a building. I like finding a place where all the Christian believers will find a place to come together. and We have a church family because, man, I miss my church family in Thousand Oaks while we're planting here in Denton, Texas, because we're still trying to assemble a family here because I love family. I care. I care about the people. And so I like going to a place where it's a place where we can all focus on where we can all, man, you know what? It's been a busy week. I've had my kids in school and all these events going on and I've been working and I don't know, coming together as the body of Christ to meet together just kind of centers us together as a body and as a family. Now here's the thing. We're in a world that's always filled with pain and misery and corruption, disappointment and fear. But the important thing for us as Christians is how do we find joy in the Christian walk? And like I said to you earlier, it, there are some certain things that we need to be walking in so that we can make sure that we're walking in joy throughout our lives. And 2 John helps us with that question, right? And so here's the things that come out of that. So here's a few points that I want to make about the path that, it, that we need to take to walk and to walk in joy. I mean, think about walk going out of your house and walking, you know? You can have a choice of different places to walk and you know, it's a nicer walk when you walk out and you're walking along and there's pretty flowers and trees and grass and the wind's blowing and it smells nice and you got neighbors that are waving to you. Man, that's one of the things I love about here in Texas is, man, I'll walk or drive down the street and everybody's waving, you know, they just wave. They don't even know who you are, but they'll wave. And I'm like, wow, praise Jesus. That's really nice to be, just to be greeted by somebody with a smile. You know, I mean, we like to take that walk going down a street like that rather than going down a street where every time you walk down the street, some, <laughs> some dog that's deranged winds up coming and barking at you just because he sees you coming up the gate and he's gnashing trying to get at you. Or you keep, keep walking up the street and the neighbor comes out his door and he's looking at you with a scowl wondering who you are or what you're doing on his street rather than waving at you. Look, we get to choose where we're going to take our feet. We tell our feet where we're going to walk. As much as I can tell my feet that I want to walk down a neighborhood that's nice and pretty or versus one that's got a nasty dog and, and a mean neighbor, hey, look, why don't you give the, the dog a steak and maybe wave at the neighbor just even if he doesn't wave at you back. <laughs> so the first way to walk, to walk in joy is you got to walk in truth. You got to walk in truth. In John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, it says, The truth shall make you free. Can I just tell you that the truth is going to make you free? It says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. See, that's the difference between calling us ourselves a Christian or calling ourselves a disciple because you're a disciple when you abide in his word, not just you know, putting on a Christian badge. Look, you, we should be able to know each other by, uh, by our works, by, we, we should be able to know each other just by the spirit that's in us, right? We should be able to see the, the spirit of the living God. And he says, look, you are my disciples indeed if you, uh, if you abide in my word. So look, a Christian can tell me that I'm a Christian, but man, if you ain't abiding in his word, you are not his disciple, man. Come on, right? So he's saying, look, if you, if you abide in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. Now the truth, see, you can have an understand, you can have a knowledge of truth, but there's something deeper in this that we got to get, 
And that is, see, I can have all the knowledge. I can read the Bible and get all kinds of knowledge. But if I don't gain the understanding with that knowledge, which is why we need Holy Spirit, if I don't get the understanding of it, I don't even understand how to walk in the freedom that I'm being offered. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. There was one time I had a dream where uh, I was asked to speak at a very large church. And it was a church, uh, it was a church of about 3,000 people. And the pastor had been found, now remember, this is a dream, but the pastor was found in adultery with his secretary. That's not an uncommon story today, right? But in this dream, I was asked to come and, and bring the word. And, and I got to the building and I'm, and I'm sitting on the side. And this was many years ago I had this dream. It was probably about 15 years ago uh, that I had it. And I'm, and I'm looking, and I'm looking at the worship team, and I'm like, man, I, I hear a lot of singing going on, but man, I do not feel God's Spirit in this. What is going on? And then I just looked down, and I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to tell your people, these people that are here today? What do you want me to tell them? And so he gave me this word, and I went up to the platform, and I began to speak. And, I, and, and this scripture is what he told me to say. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the only way. Yahweh is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There are not a million paths to heaven. There are not a million paths to the Father in heaven. Look, you can have a lot of paths to a lot of different demigods, little gods, little g-gods, but they ain't the God. There's only one way to him, and he says it in his word, and that's absolute truth. But one of the things that happened is I got up there and I said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, people were throwing their pens at me, throwing their bulletins and Bibles and whatever they had in their hand, and they're like, go away, we don't want you. We want the other pastor back because we like his, we like his talks. And I was like sitting there going, what? This is crazy. I just read a scripture, and I'm sitting there in the dream, and I'm going, what is the matter? And everyone got up and started walking out of this huge building. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I was the wrong person for them to bring back. They're like, bring back other pastors. We don't care what he did. Man, we've come to a place in society where people will close their eyes and, and pretend and not want to see and not want to look and, 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 and just put the scales on their eyes because if I don't see it, then I don't have to care about it. And they wanted him back. Well, all of a sudden, there was a, a, splattering, a splattering of people that were in this, in this audience. And I called them all and I said, all right, well, if you're the only ones left, praise Jesus. He's got a word for you today. He wants to love you. He wants to pour out his spirit upon you. So why don't you all just come down here in the front row. I'm going to step down off the platform and we're just going to have a good time with Jesus this morning. So I get down to the floor and I look and I realize there are people that, come down and they literally had their Bibles on their laps. They had pens in their hand with pads of paper. And I was like, wow, these people are students of Holy Spirit. They want to hear what God has to say. They're not just taking from what a pastor says and reading the things on the thing and snapping the, the, the Googleable or Facebook memes that we can create. They weren't doing that. They were like, they were like sitting there and they're like, Holy Spirit, teach me, show me the word, show me the Father, show me. And they were ready. They sat with this ready look on their face. I was like, wow, this is awesome. I mean, I'm looking at this big, huge place and it's empty and there's 12 people. Isn't that amazing? I don't know why in my dream there was 12 people, but I think it's associated with the 12 disciples. And they came down, they were all ready to, to come under the tutelage of Holy Spirit and learn from him and write down whatever the Lord said. They wanted to write it down, not just kind of go, mm -hmm, feed me, feed me, feed me, and I'll come back next Sunday and get another feeding. We got to get into the Word and hear what Holy Spirit has to say to each one of us. I think some of the reasons why people, look, I'm probably going to upset somebody right now, but sometimes I believe that people don't want to get into the Word because they don't want to have to hear and contend with and deal with and make a decision about what Holy Spirit's about to tell them. Because Holy Spirit might tell you to pick some stuff up, but He may also tell you to put some stuff down. And people don't want to hear that. They don't want to follow the commands of the Father. They don't want to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. They want to live their lives their way. Leave me alone and let me live my life my way. Well, 
like I said, Yahweh is the only way, and he's leading us to a better life. And then he's got a better life after this life for us. And so we want, we want to be doing those things. So these people, they're sitting there, and they're just reading, and they're, they're ready. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And then the Lord told me, he goes, look, if there's only one person, one person that was sitting there in front of you, you will preach to that one person like you're preaching to 3,000 people. Look, I ain't, I ain't even about building some big, huge thing. I don't care. The only thing I want is to bring an increase to the kingdom of heaven. And if people are down with that and you come to our, our church family and you come to our building, if you're okay with being in a building, and you, you want to be a part of what we're being a part of, man, I'm going after it. I'm, I'm WYSIWYG, man. What you see is what you get. What you see right now in front of you is what you get when you meet me in face to face. Because I have to tell you, if you come and the Holy Spirit says something to me and I get a word for you, I will tell you what the word is. Now you can choose to run away, but here's what happens. People don't want to be exposed, so they want to go to places where they can hide. You can't hide at Ignite Denton. You probably need to know that right off the bat because we're building a church that's ready for Jesus Christ's return. We're setting up a church where the bride is ready for the bridegroom to show up. And look, we're not here to hurt anybody. We want to call people out because sometimes people don't even realize what they're in the middle of. They, they haven't even made a decision. But sometimes people make a decision and go, man, get out of my business. Judge not, lest you be judged according to your ju own judgment. They get all whoopy whoopy and they walk out and they go, you know what, I'm going to go up the street. That's great, go up the street. But I'm going to tell you, there are people that have done that. They're still in their junk today still today in their junk. It's a sad case because people don't want to get real about what God's saying about their lives. But if we'll live according to His way, His truth, His purpose, the way He's created it, man, it'll create an opportunity. And that's what God's preparing for, right? That's, what he's, that's what's happening in the church right now. He's right now preparing the church as a bride for the bridegroom to come and, and it's a pickup for a wedding date. That's what he's doing. He's preparing it. And so, yeah, we have people that'll come in. They go, wow, there's God here. God is in this place. This is going to be my new home church. And then you don't even ever see him again. I'm like, wow, what happened there? That's interesting. Look, we, we got to get real about our relationship with Jesus now. We got to get real about it. Because even people that have given their lives to Jesus and come along, man, they come along, but they come from a different premise, right? They come from a different pre premise to just receive the blessings of God instead of saying, God, here's my life. I'm giving it to you. So we got to walk in the truth. The second thing is we want to walk in obedience to God's commands. Let's walk in obedience to God's commands. In John 15, verses 10 through 12, it says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. See, so Jesus isn't asking us to do anything that he hasn't already done, right? He's never asked us to do anything, picking up his cross, right? Be willing to be crucified as I was crucified. It is not, it's not I who live, but it's Christ who lives inside of me. In verse 11, it says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. Look, joy comes when we remain walking in His commandments, because I can tell you, when you're not walking in His commandments, and you're walking out of your flesh, walking out of your carnal mind, you will feel shame. You will feel guilt. You will have to put it away. Some people actually use drugs, alcohol, or any other form of thing, pornography. They'll use things to comfort that area of shame, and all it does, it turns them back into more, it turns into more shame. Well, goodness gracious, let's just come all out for Jesus to just lay ourselves at the altar and say, man, I have not been doing such a great job with this. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ in 1981, that's what happened. I came to the end of myself and I'm like, I am not doing very well and making decisions for my own life. So Father, I want a great life. I want a good life. Tell me what I need to do. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Here I am, man, over 37 years later, still loving Jesus, still got a, and now I'm, I'm, he's allowing me to serve him. Praise Jesus. I'm excited about that. But we got to abide in his commandment. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Come on, church. Can we just stop fighting with each other? Stop splitting hairs. Stop having to be right. And let's just love one another into truth. Let's let the Holy Spirit do the work of telling somebody when they're really off. Let him take care of it. He'll take care of his business. 
But let's love one another. I'm not saying just be okay with what everybody's doing because we want to help people. We want to help them grow. But let's, man, let's, let's love one another. I mean, I think that's one of the big things missing. Not, not just in that, and that's probably why the world can't love one another because the church has a hard time loving one another. That's why we got so many hurt people out there. Can I just say this? There's a lot of people out there. This might speak to you, might offend you. I don't know. Some people call me an equal opportunity offender. But here's the challenge I have as a pastor, because I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been a person who is just an attender at a church or a member of a church, but then I also got into ministry. Can I tell you that as many people as leave the church who say that somebody hurt them or the pastor hurt them, how many of those people actually hurt the pastor or hurt somebody else within the church? The problem is, is they're not willing to face the stuff that's really going on. And I'm not saying that there's not pastors out there that are not walking according to the scripture in the way they should, but there's also people in the body who are not walking the way they should. And so we need to come together as a body and, and, and get that stuff, let the Lord kind of sift that stuff out. But the challenge we have as the body is we need to start pressing in and loving one another and coming together. Look, I don't want to see those people that are out there who have been hurt by the church. If you got hurt, my biggest question is, how did you get offended? Because the, body, because the word says that you're dead in Christ. You're dead. Your old man is dead. Your old nature is dead. How can you offend a dead man? It's because you're holding on to your thoughts, your old patterns. You're holding on to things that you're, are your pet peeves. Man, let him go and be free in Jesus' name and walk in the spirit of love and peace. Well, let's go on to Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. As we talk about walking in love, it says, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, this world would just be a much better place if we could see the whole world walk in love as it's described in God's word. And we find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. It says, love suffers long, it is kind. Love does not envy, love does not, <laughs> love does not parade itself. It's not prideful, it's not arrogant. It doesn't say, oh, look, I got you. I got you on that meme, I got you. Look, it doesn't parade itself. It's not puffed up, it's not saying, look at how great I am. It's not all that. Love does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Stick that one up on your bathroom mirror. Let that start your day out. That this, Lord, is how I need to look. And look, at, look I'm, I'm going to tell you. The world may not want to walk in joy, and it may not walk in joy, and it may not walk in love, but regardless of what others do, we're responsible for our own selves. We're responsible for the spirit that's inside of us. See, we don't honor people because they're honorable all the time. We honor people because of the honor that's in us through Jesus Christ, because we are the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and he's, he's given us love. He says, I am love, therefore love is in you. I am the light, and I've come, in, I've come to you, and I'm, I'm in you, and so I've become the light through you. And so we need to be the light. When we walk in him, and we walk in his ways, and we walk with the Holy Spirit present within us, we'll find ourselves walking in joy and spreading that joy to others. And I can tell you, not everybody wants to walk around sad, discouraged, disappointed, afraid to laugh, afraid to rejoice, afraid to praise God. You know, there's, there's people that just want to be told it's okay. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to let out a, a bolstered laugh and, and just say, thank you, Jesus. But when we walk in joy, we have the, the ability to bring a new experience and an opportunity into somebody's, somebody else's life. And not everybody's going to choose it, and it's okay. Man, even especially in this situation, I've smiled at more people, said hello to more people, and some people just don't want anything to do with me. Well, that's not on me, and it's not my problem to make them respond positively to me. But the, the challenge and the thing I'm willing to rise up to is that no matter where I go, I'm going to bring Jesus. No matter where I'm at, I, I want to bring the presence and the joy and be a blessing into somebody else's day. See, everybody wants somebody else to be the blessing in their day. Can I tell you the first place of finding joy is be a blessing in somebody else's day because that just really will change 
your outlook on the things that are going on around you. Let me finish this with this because this is how you know when you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you're one with the Holy Spirit inside of you. There's a fruit in you found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. It says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. Here's the, here's the thing. When you're walking in truth, and you're walking in the truth of the Lord, and you've got the Spirit inside of you, this is what should be coming out. This is what should be coming out of us in Jesus' name. Well, I want to encourage you today. Walk in joy. I want to see you walking in joy and being okay with laughing and having a good time, even in the midst of this. Have some fun. Laugh with one another. Man, everybody's playing some games, and man, that's fun. Don't kill nobody over it. I mean, I got a pretty intense household they are a competitive bunch of people here and man it gets intense any of you guys play like monopoly where you could lose your head on a monopoly game because they're so competitive i don't know if that's in your house but i got some competitive people here but we want to walk in love and we want to walk in peace and joy and long suffering we want to be kind and good and we want to be faithful and gentle and we want to have self-control man that's one that a lot of people don't even look at self-control what does that mean well, i got to be responsible for myself. Take personal responsibility. With that, we're going to close. I love you. I want to share with you. I'm just so thankful that you're here with us today. I pray that today is, hopefully you're still with me, and that you're able to hear the whole thing, and you didn't get offended and run away or shut it off, but that you would hear what the Holy Spirit, what the Lord wants to say to you today. Let the Holy Spirit permeate. Don't, don't look at the package. Don't look at me, and don't just put me off. Listen to what's hearing. And if you feel a prick in your spirit, a prick in your heart, maybe that's Holy Spirit trying to talk to you today. So don't make it about me, but listen to Holy Spirit for him to speak to you today. With that, I want to tell you, if you're having a tough time, I'm with you. I'm with you and I feel you. I do. We're walking in a lot of similar situations that a lot of people are walking in and we empathize. And we want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you. We want you to know that we care about you. And if it doesn't matter what situation you're in. If you've lost a loved one, if you've got the virus, if you uh, are just laid off of work, or if you, you're having a hard time with your bills, can I just tell you that we need to knit together as the body of Christ and pray together and believe for one another and have faith for one another. Because maybe you're doing okay. Maybe all your bills are paid and everything's good. Can I encourage you to reach out to somebody that might be having a difficult time and don't be afraid to call them because you're afraid that, that, you know, it might get awkward or they might ask you for something, can you just call somebody and say, I believe that God's going to meet your needs. Can I pray with you? Because there's something about stepping alongside somebody else, right? We all have a hard time having faith for ourselves, but having faith for somebody else and having faith for a brother in Christ really matters and it makes a difference. And so can I encourage you, if you're in a good place, hey, if you're in a bad place, can I encourage you to call somebody up? who's doing pretty good and say, praise God, I rejoice with you. Oh man, that, that'll, that'll take some sucking up to do that, right? But, you know, taking care of some of your pride or your anger or your frustration or why, why doesn't God bless me? That'll fix it, right? Just go and say, man, I praise God for where you're at. Praise Jesus. And then if you know somebody else who's struggling, call them and say, can we just pray together and cry together and trust God together and believe for one another in the situation we're in? If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ today, I want to encourage you to pray. Acknowledge what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Acknowledge the fact that his blood was, was spilt for you for the remission of your sin. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. Acknowledge what he did at the cross so that you could have life and have it eternally. <laughs> Just acknowledge and recognize that Jesus is the son of God, that he came in the flesh as man, but he is fully God. He was fully man and fully God. And just invite him to come and be the Lord and Savior of your life. I'm not going to tell you what to pray because I just think that's wrong. That's like having somebody else ask my wife, tell her I'd like to marry her and ask her if she's willing to marry me. I mean, look, God wants to have a relationship with you. And so it's time to be bold and step out and make that a prayer of your own from your own heart. And if you did that today, I'd, I'd just like you to encourage you to go out to our email and send me an email. And let me know that you made a decision for Christ today. With that, I just want to close us in prayer today. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we still have to preach the gospel freely, even if it's just online right now. We just thank you for the opportunity. We're going to praise you in all things. 
and thank you for your goodness. And so, Lord, I pray that your spirit would go out from this place and minister to each person that's on the other side of this camera and that's watching this video. I pray that your spirit would just resonate within them. Your spirit would come and pour out a, a spirit of joy upon them that they might laugh and they might be able to have some fun and loosen up a little bit. And Lord, we just thank you. We pray that you would meet every financial need that's out there in Jesus' name. For those who are called by your name, you said you will take care of their needs, Father. And so we pray, take these situations and turn them for your good. And Lord, I pray these are moments and times that we need a miracle. This is the time we get to see you show up. And I pray, Father, that our faith would be increased during this season, that we would rest upon the faith that you have within us, that I, sometimes I can't walk in my own faith. I can't stand in my own faith, but I know I can stand in the faith of the kingdom of heaven, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost that's inside of me. So, Lord, help me to focus on that and relying on the faith that you've given me to believe for these things and, and, and believe for you to move. In the midst of these times, we pray for business owners and we pray for uh, we pray for people that have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are still sick. We pray for healing in Jesus' name, comfort to hearts. But Lord, we pray for wisdom. And we pray for wisdom upon our nation, wisdom upon the people, wisdom upon our leaders. We pray, Father, that you would reveal everything that is a lie in the name of Jesus and that you expose everything uh, with truth in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we love you. We praise you. Surrender and submit our lives completely to you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We want to make sure, encourage you to be out there on our social media. Hit like and, and subscribe and all those things so that you can be alerted the next time we come on live and, uh, or anytime we post a video. God bless you with that. Have a wonderful week. We are praying with you. Don't forget Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I'll be going live again. We're uh, talking about the prophecies of Jesus, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.